So, anyone wants to make things better after the last challenge? Not really. Probably just you. Yeah, besides you invited the wrong people for that. And I didn't even get to do it in the end. Okay, that's probably better when I think about it. What stupidity did you come up with this time? Hey, you are lucky Sunarin is a coward. What did you say? Be so kind and leave your family disputes for private chats. Yeah, I'm busy. What's this about? I'm guessing it's some challenge again. Indeed. You know, I don't trust you with challenges anymore. Yeah, you are even worse than Oikawa. Is it wise to be saying that when his fiance is here too? Nah, it's fine. I agree with him. You really have an interesting relationship. What can I say? I'm not sure if I should be impressed or worried about your mental health. But I'll go with impressed for now. Hi. Did I miss something? Hi there. Are you okay? Still healing broken bones, but it could have been worse. Yeah, I can imagine. I have a script out this from that little Tarushima mentioned in the group chat. Though, is it a good idea for you to participate in challenges so shortly after everything? I'm fine. If it's not something physical or harsh, I'll give it a try. It can be a good distraction, right? Sounds like a plan. But if you need help with anything, we are here to help. What he said. Thank you. I appreciate it. Alright then, what's the challenge? I've been saving this one for a really long time, so you better do it properly. It's either to fall or at least pretend to fall in front of your partner to see their reaction. That's the best you can come up with? Rude. I can already tell you what Shika's reaction is going to be. He's going to jump out of his skin with worry if he sees me just about stagger. But I don't think that's a bad one. Yeah, it's not one of those that would make them overly worried. <laughs> Speak for yourself. You are the exception. I mean, it sounds like it could be interesting. Yeah, I guess it can be done. Doesn't sound that difficult. I don't know. I don't like these pretend to challenges. It will be fine. If you feel like it's going wrong, you can just say you stumbled over something and you are good. I guess that's true. Though, Daisha should be careful. I will be, no worries. Okay, I guess I can do that. Great. Head out then and enjoy. And try not to hurt yourself for real. How awfully considerate of you. Shut it. As much as Tanaka wished he was exaggerating with his previous statement, he was more than 100% sure he knew exactly how Enoshita was about to react. He saw it in every little flinch in his boyfriend's face, heard it in every hitched breath whenever he just about staggered. He was finally settling back at home after spending several months in hospital, and while he felt better than ever, Enoshita seemed to be convinced something bad was going to happen any time he left the flat. And if Tanaka was sure of something, it was that this challenge wasn't going to help his boyfriend's mental state. Can't they figure out some nice challenge for once? Though I guess I shouldn't have agreed to it in the first place. A little hypocritical, aren't we? Shaking his head, he wiped the sweat from his forehead and resumed the exercise he was supposed to do in order to improve his mobility, counting every second until he could finally finish. Maybe I should have waited for Chica to come home. It always goes better when he's around. He dismissed that thought immediately. Enoshita had enough work on his own. He couldn't possibly pile even more on him. That wouldn't be very gentlemanlike. Pulling on his remaining willpower, he ignored the starting shaking in his legs and pushed forward, finishing the exercise just as the main door to their flat opened. Like a clock. Welcome home. Enoshita gave him a soft smile when he spotted him on the floor, 
letting his bag slide down his shoulder before he leaned down to get a kiss, which Tanaka happily provided. Thanks. I see you are in full swing already. Tanaka puffed out his chest, trying his hardest to pretend it wasn't heaving like he just finished running. Of course. I can possibly let three months of recovery go to waste by being lazy. Enoshita's face softened even more, but Tanaka didn't miss the brief flush of pain in his eyes. As if you were ever lazy. But you could have waited for me. I will help you. Nah, it's fine. You've been helping me the whole time, so now it's on me to step up my game. He grinned, pulling Enoshita down again by his collar to kiss him once more, enjoying the surprised hum his boyfriend let out. One kiss turned into three, as Tanaka found it hard to let go when he had Enoshita in his hands. But knowing their position couldn't be comfortable, he let go after that, albeit reluctantly. Enoshita seemed to think similarly if Tanaka could judge by his expression and the way he started tugging on the fabric of his t-shirt. Still, it's better when someone's watching you during the exercises. Especially this early after getting released from hospital. Chica, I spent enough time watching you to know what I'm supposed to do. I'm completely fine, see? To prove his point, he got up from the floor. However, as soon as he put more weight on his feet, his legs wobbled under him. Ryu! Surprisingly strong arms stopped his imminent fall just in time. Tanaka hissed and involuntarily leaned on Enoshita, instinctively latching onto his arm to stay still. Careful, take it slow. Tanaka cursed under his breath, loosening the grip on Enoshita's biceps as soon as he regained some stability, already feeling he was going to find bruises where his fingers dug into Enoshita's fair skin. Damn it. It's okay, just steady yourself. It's going to be fine. I guess I shouldn't be so overconfident, eh? Karma always strikes. He caressed the places where his hands were before in an attempt to soothe the surely hurting skin and flesh, guilt rising in his chest. Sorry. Huh? Oh, that? Don't worry about it. I'm used to helping my patients up. Sometimes they just need to hold on to something. Yeah, but I'm your boyfriend. It feels all wrong to hurt you. Enoshita let out a light chuckle his fingers curling in the now slightly longer hair on Tanaka's nape. Then it's good you didn't. Seriously, don't worry about me. I'm not that fragile to not be able to withstand a little bit of pressure. Finally allowing himself to relax, Tanaka took Enoshita's hand and landed a kiss on his fingers, thanking all deities he got to experience their miraculous touch. Can I at least make you dinner for that? Are you sure? You just exercised a lot, you should rest. How about you take a break and then we can make dinner together? Tanaka grinned, unable to stop himself from leaning for another kiss. Deal. Come on, Genji, you are slower than a snail today. Shirabu rolled his eyes, but still sped up a bit to join Sami by his side. Why are you rushing so much? I thought we are on a walk. Yes, but if we don't hurry up a bit, we'll miss the reason I took you here. You still haven't told me what that reason is. Sami flashed him a bright smile, making Shirabu's heart skip a beat. Because then it wouldn't be a surprise. Shirabu swallowed the protest already halfway from his mouth and instead reached for Sami's hand, his cheeks flaring up as he entwined their fingers together. He tried to ignore Sami's surprised face and kept his eyes buried into the gravel path under their feet and the heat now creeping up the back of his neck too. He was well aware he usually didn't initiate physical affection when they were outside, but the last weeks taught him not to take anything regarding their relationship for granted and so he put an extra effort into getting out of his shell when it came to affection, hoping his message was getting across. That bit of embarrassment was worth it if he made sure Sami knew he loved him. 
Everything okay? Shirabu cringed. Apparently, he wasn't doing as good of a job as he thought. Yeah, I just... I wanted to hold your hand. But you can let go if you don't... He fell silent when Sami pulled him to his side, the tender smile back on his face. As if... It just surprised me, that's all. You've been unusually touchy lately. Yeah, because I don't want to lose you. Is it bad? No, of course not. I like it when you get more affectionate. He stopped, stopping Shirabu too thanks to their still connected hands. But if you are doing this just for my sake, you don't have to. Not in public at least. I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Shirabu took a shaky breath, taking a moment to settle his thoughts. Of course he was doing it for Sammy's sake to some extent. Same as for his own. The last thing he wanted was to repeat the strange limbo they fell into a few weeks back. I'm not. But thank you for being considerate. He shivered slightly when Sammy's long fingers ran through his hair, removing one of the stray strands from his eye. Of course. You are my boyfriend. I want you to feel good when we spend time together. But please, don't force yourself into anything. I'm content with what we always had. But that wasn't nearly enough. We both know it, don't we? Hirabu gave a little nod, which seemed to calm Sammy down. He blushed even harder when Sammy kissed his forehead, the light touch sending jolts through his skin. Alright then, let's get going. Hirabu followed him further into the opposite end of the park. Tiny bits of anxiety started to swirl in his chest the darker it got around them, despite his attempts to push it away, the only thing keeping him from turning around all the time being Sammy's warm hand. To take his mind off the fact they were almost alone in the darkening park, he focused his mind on different things, which inevitably led him to the group chat and the challenge they were given earlier. He didn't get the chance to do it before they went out, and now he hesitated even more, not wanting to ruin their walk with some stupid challenge. I can't act anyway. It would be completely obvious that it's not... A yelp escaped his mouth when his foot suddenly caved in under him, even the tiny difference making him lose his balance. He prepared for the fall, but instead of hitting the ground, he was pulled back by his arm and immediately pressed against his boyfriend's chest. Careful. Arms wrapped around his waist, pulling him even closer if it was humanly possible. Are you okay? Shirabu nodded, instinctively clutching Sammy's jacket in his hands. Yeah, it's... I'm fine. Even your ankle? That could have been nasty. It's fine, really. Sammy visibly relaxed. Okay, good. I mean, I would gladly carry you if you got hurt, but I would prefer you staying healthy over that. Shirabu couldn't help the smile making its way to his face. He leaned his forehead on Sam's shoulder, closing his eyes for a while so that he could fully appreciate the warmth surrounding him now. I see. How far is it? Just a few steps. Let's go. Reluctantly, Shirabu pulled away but made sure their hands were connected when they started walking again. He didn't want to fall again after all. In principle, Asahi didn't have much issue with doing the challenge. The problem lay somewhere else. Specifically in the fact he had to fall in front of Noya instead of just letting him know about it. His acting skills were very close to zero, and while he happened to get lucky with Noya being home this time around, he wasn't sure if he could make his fall look believable without actually face planting on the ground. He was clumsy enough to do just that. Well, I guess a small fall never killed anyone, right? Though, maybe it did. It's not that difficult to break a bone or something like that. Asahi, are you listening? He actually jumped when Noya's voice sounded right next to his ear, 
for a second making him forget everything he was thinking about. Naya scrunched his nose, shaking his head in an apparent disbelief as he draped himself over the back of the couch. Seriously, you look like a lion and yet your reflexes are those of a wild rabbit. Asahi blinked a few times, his brain thinking a bit to comprehend Noya's words. Is that some new philosophy of yours? Nah, just an observation. Then... ouch? That you appeared next to me out of nowhere, of course I got spooked. Raising his eyebrow, Noya poked Asahi's cheek, narrowing his eyes as if he was looking for something on his face. I was talking to you and you stopped listening. It's only fair you got scared. Oh, did you? I'm sorry, that wasn't my intention. Noya huffed, but the long years spent by his side taught Asahi there was barely any annoyance in it, and that he didn't have to take it too hard. He took Noya's hand in his, bringing it to his lips to leave a kiss on his palm. What were you saying? That we should go shopping. There's absolutely nothing in the fridge. So he furrowed his brow. He clearly remembered stocking up the fridge the day Noya returned from his last trip, which was barely two days ago. And he definitely didn't eat that much. You? Are you trying to tell me you managed to snack your way through a week's worth of groceries in just two days? At least Noah had the decency to look guilty, a faint pink tint spreading over his cheeks as he averted his gaze. I needed to refill the nutrients. And besides, you shop as if you were here alone, so no wonder it's gone already. Asahi's heart sank. Maybe because I am alone here for most of the time these days. He shook his head, stopping himself just in time not to say any of that out loud. He wished Noya the happiness of being able to travel freely around the world and he definitely didn't intend to make him feel guilty about his passion. A few days of loneliness haven't killed anyone yet either, right? It was a small price to pay for making sure his fiancé was happy. He could sacrifice that much. And besides, it wasn't like Noah forgot about him the moment he left the country. Asahi? Huh? Oh, sorry, did I miss something again? Instead of an answer, Noah suddenly wrapped his arms around him from behind, squeezing tight and burying his face into the crook of his neck. So he hummed in surprise, but then just gently ruffled Noah's hair, enjoying the closeness he missed for the last two weeks. I'll stay home now. Hmm? I won't go on any trips this month. I'll stay home with you. So you'll learn to shop for two again. Asahi's lips parted, but soon, his surprise turned into a soft smile. You don't have to do that just because of me. Noya raised his head a bit, reminding Asahi of a guilty kid. I do, because of us. And you don't have to make it sound like I'm sacrificing my limbs to stay home. Chuckling, Asahi pressed a kiss into Noya's hair before tapping on his arm. Okay. As long as you are happy, I am too. Let's go to the store. We wouldn't want you to starve, right? And it's a good opportunity to do the challenge. A kiss landed on his cheek before Noah let go of him and skipped to grab his wallet. So he watched him with a smile on his lips, a pleasant warmth spreading from his heart into the rest of his chest. It's really the small things, huh? He chuckled under his breath, thanking God Noah couldn't read his thoughts, and got up too, quickly thinking what he was going to stumble over to be done with the challenge as soon as possible. Come on then, before they close. Right behind you. He intentionally left his foot a bit behind as he was crossing the door threshold, stumbling forward with a yelp. Careful! Noah was immediately in front of him pushing against his chest with both his hands and shoulder to keep him upright. So his heart sped up, both from surprise and worry. He caught himself on the doorframe to prevent himself from falling further and potentially taking Noya with him on the floor. All good? So he let out a shaky breath, 
squeezing stuttering Noah in his arms. Don't do that ever again. Do what? Catching me. But I did not want you to fall. It helped, didn't it? Yeah, but what if I fell with you or on you? What if I hurt you? He pulled away, but kept his hands on Noya's biceps to make sure he was listening. Don't catch me next time. I can survive a fall, but I would never forgive myself if you got hurt because of me. Noya made a grimace, but the light red coloring his cheeks betrayed him. Fine, but you promised me that you will be careful. You would fall from a pretty solid height. You could easily get hurt too. With his heartbeat finally settling back into a somewhat normal rhythm, Asahi nodded and entwined their fingers together. Alright, I promise.